Welcome everybody to the finals of the Orpington Saturday MSS and we have whittled it down to our final two players. We have Matty Morgan from Ireland, we have Heng Wei Zhang who is a bit more local but is still fighting their way through for those final points. It's a very very similar matchup with that sort of Flutter main plus Landorus plus Tornadus and then good stuff's core, both from an Ogre Pond different types of Ogre Pond, the fire versus the water. Matty has a King Gambit as a supplementary dark type, whereas Chi Yu is the one for Heng Wei. It is going to be one to watch because you know both of them have fought so, so hard to get here. Yes, both his players have faced a lot of other very strong players today. We've had Taron Birdie, we've had Costa, we've had Jamie <laughs> Boy, you know, all really hype matches. And these two players just you know, playing really consistently, playing really, really well, making the correct reads in each turn and you're know, preserving the right Pokemon each in, in all of their matches. And I'm just looking at their team sheets, you know, very similar teams as you mentioned, you know, a little bit some niche picks. Oh I couldn't wouldn't quite say King Gambit's a niche pick, but it's not as quite up there in kind of the usage rankings as say you know a Landorus or a Fluttermane and but you know the both players choosing that Fluttermane and the Landorus just proving that these two Pokemon are really the staples of regulation E and just doing so much consistent damage Fluttermane has just such great both offensive and defensive typing just you know, ignoring all the fake outs from the iron hands as well it does do that perfectly and of course with both of them seeing that sort of sort of coming along yeah well, actually no because there's no fake out coming out from Heng Wei so it's just gonna be Matty who's gonna worry about that fake out mind game with Rillaboom and Iron Hands facing into those Pokemon of course if you even don't get that fake out you know you have something like Landorus on the opposing side that is threatening damage under them whether that be that Terra Flying Terra Blast or that be going for a Stomping Tantrum in the Iron Hands there's so many different things and mind games are gonna come out from both these players and they're both very well trained in this sort of environment they both know that if they go for that if they go for something that the opponent's gonna be one two steps ahead and they've got Try and be one or two steps ahead of those one and two steps, and that is just, you know, they're gonna do it and they're gonna they're gonna be able to be able to completely do that. We could see Matty saving those fake outs for the time we need to go for a setup. You could see him looping fake out plus intimidate to that perfect point when he really really needs it. Of course, King Gambit can be very useful here because if you can break through some of that flutter main or you can go for those sucker punches in some of these Pokemon to want to take a sucker punch, you can then whittle it down to a point where you can then focus on that Chi Yu. You can sort of Chi Yu. Yeah, it, uh, looking at the teams, Chi Yu is crucial in going to Matty because you see Fluttermane can maybe deal with it but the rest of the Pokemon don't really want to take a hit from it as given its typing and the damage you can put out. Yes, this Chiyu is actually the only thing on Henway's team that actually resists the King Gambit. This King Gambit is one of those, I think, from regulations of B or C where a lot of players started running Black Glasses with the Sword Stance and this is the set that Matty is running and it hits everything on Henway's team really, really hard. The Fluttermane can't really, well, it can actually hit it for neutral with a Dazzling Gleam and actually the King Gambit without any Steel type attacks might not be able able to knock out the Fluttermane in one hit without some sort of attack boost but of course there's that Landorus on Henway's team if he has to be very careful when he's switching it in or leading with it because if the King Gambit's on the field it can just get a plus one defiant boost from that Intimidate. That is something that I complete watch on of course being in the finals you never really make that mistake yes Matty can call it out and maybe get it on a switch or maybe just lead it and then hope that Landorus comes in or maybe force the Landorus in so it could be a situation where it just gets a big knockout on these Pokemon or has it in a situation where you know you can either terrestrialize and then maybe get knocked out or waste your terror or you can be in a position where you have to switch manually see if the players do fall into those traps and do pull those bluffs going into this game one we have Matty from our perspective going into Hangway on the top there both of them raring to go. We do see a lead comes out. It is the Tornadus plus a Chiyu we saw earlier from Hangway in front of Matty's Iron Hands plus the Ogre Pond Heart Flame. So straight away, there's that fake out pressure. You know, looking at the Pokemon there, Chiyu can Terra Ghost to make sure it does take that fake out. Tornadus being the mental herb version with Terra Steel actually is going to be flinched regardless of what it does. And that means that it's going to be very, very detrimental if it does get flinched because it can't get its tailwind up and these Pokemon can take advantage of that. They're not the fastest right now, but they can still be a step behind where Matty can manipulate the situation and be very, very strong in his earlier turns. Yes, it looks like just from, this Tornadus does carry Protect, so there is a one thing uh, the Tornadus could do is just to go for a Protect this turn and stall out that t uh, first turn of Fake Out and then in the following turns go for maybe a Tailwind. But, you know, looking at uh, 
Hengwei's team, he's got a Chi Yu, and I think that should outspeed the Iron Hands and the Ogre Pond. So he might not see much of a reason to actually go for any sort of Tailwind. So maybe you won't want to go for a Sunny Day just to get some extra boost. But we see a ter Terror coming off from Matty in turn one. So that Ogre Pond going for that Terra Fire, getting the attack one boost from the Embody aspect. So this Ogre Pond is going to be hitting really, really hard this turn. It's going to be hitting super hard. Of course, there's that protector on that tornado, so it is kind of forced into that to not take any damage on any of these Pokemon. Heat Wave comes out from the Chi Yu. Doesn't do overly much to both these Pokemon, given their new typings and the bulk they are given. I've decided your Ghost Inside slot there. Doesn't get a knockout, which is very well. Doesn't even get any damage on it because it is to protect. Drain Pants coming through on that Chi Yu. It does get a knockout after that Life Orb damage, and that is one of the biggest threats to pretty much every Pokemon on Matty's team gone. And now he can sit comfortably and just think, okay, my Ogre Pond can hit into most of these Pokemon for good damage. Landorus is the only one that really hinders it. But other than that, you know, you can still throw some good damage down. We see that Hangway does opt to bring in their own Ogre Pond, which could be a spanner in the works for this fire typing, but is going to be amazing eyes for that Iron Hands with its Wild Charge. Oh, yes, indeed. That Ogre Pond on Henway's side, if it chooses to go for that Terra Water, Oh, to terrestrialize into the I've forgotten the name of the <laughs> wellspring for when it tear in the but the form of the, the mask but it it's so it's also going to be hit really hard by any grass type moves from this fire type ogre pond so we have to see the sort of speed interactions between these two but you know the tornado both the tornadoes and the ogre pond on Henry's side are not going to be in enjoying taking any sort of electric type attacks so tornado is going for that tailwind just guaranteeing that the ogre pond on Henry's side is going to be the fastest on the field ivy cudgel correctly targeting the iron hands but unfortunately it's not enough to knock it out but wild charge coming back knocks it Ooh. down Ooh. knocks it to the artificial focus sash <laughs> you know that mental herb is the item that we both us and the players know that is on that tornado so maybe showing a bit of bulk has been put in there for, for a role in that situation you know tornado you know it's going to see iron hands one of the most common earth type pokemon so maybe showing where has ev'd it so it takes that hit i know a lot of players just start ev'ing their land uh, their tornadoes their landers a lot, a lot of those genies to be a little bit bulkier because they are already so strong with what they do and because you got bleak wind storm you got these moves that are more more like a, a pace setter move they're more supportive moves it doesn't matter how much you're doing as long as you are hitting with them Rillaboom comes in, which is going to be very, very supportive for boosting the attacks on the Ogre Pond on Matty's side, but also does boost them in tandem for Hengway. Let's see if that is beneficial as the Grass Light does come out, get that knockout on the Tornadoes, meaning that, that is another problem out of the way, but is it enough to control the field in front of this opposing Ogre Pond who goes with its own Ivy Sudgeal? Yes, yeah, so the Ivy Kaju is easily going to be enough to knock out this uh, fire type Ogre Pond. But of course, now that there's a Rillaboom on the field, which is not going to really mind taking any sort of hits from this Ogre Pond on Henway's side, which has a Horn Leech, Ivy Kaju follow me, and Spiky Shield. So actually, you know, King Gambit also coming in on Maddie's side. And now that the, the Chi Yu got knocked out earlier, Maddie, you know, correctly kind of prioritizing that really strong Pokemon means that the King Gambit is actually quite free to start attacking. Of course, course, the Fluttermane is going to be dealing neutral hits onto this King Gambit, and the Fluttermane is a choice specs variant, so it's unable to protect. But I think, you know, going into, we kind of at this late game stage, and it looks like Maddie does have the Pokemon advantage, and in terms of the type matchups and everything, I think Maddie does have a little bit more of an advantage in this game. Matty does have that advantage and is going to be looking to take the full you know, advantage of that advantage just to make sure that he can profess it really, really well. Of course, both these players are timidly you know, dancing around the field trying to think you know, which Pokemon is the best to have on right now, which Pokemon is, you know, it isn't maybe as good. Right now, King Gambit is looking very, very happy in front of both of these Pokemon because it's not taking dam damage too much from either of them. I mean, Fluttermane is forced to go for the Moonblast or the Shadow Ball. Yes, it is super strong now that you've Thrastalized, but there's still that chance of those stat drops, which if it does survive can be very, very detrimental because it is going to do even more damage back. Grassy Guy goes on through and does a chunk of damage oh, wow. to the Fluttermane and the Sucker Punch blows <laughs> up as well. That double up perfectly timed there from Matty, meaning the Fluttermane, one of the most powerful Pokemon in the game, is just removed the second it gets its fullest potential out, leaving this Ogre Pond all by itself. And both of these Pokemon really can happily take an Ivy Sudgeal. It does go into that King Gambit who goes down to 117 health, but it's going to get healed back up straight away. So only about a third of its health gone, but it's really happy taking that, especially when it's just one Water Grass type in front of two Pokemon that have very, very good moves into it. Yes. 
both of these Pokemon are very happy staring down at this Ogapon. Rillaboom really benefited from the DLC, gaining access to that Grassy Glide, because without the Grassy Glide, the Flutterman would have been able to actually get an attack off, because the King Gambit Sucker Punch would have been the only priority, but you know, Flutterman is just a very frail Pokemon on the physical side, and Henway recognising that his Ogapon is really going to have its work cut out, trying to knock out a Rillaboom that resists it, <laughs> and also the King Gambit, so, you know, Probably Henway going back to the drawing board, kind of reassessing what he can do to kind of face out Maddie's team, which is really, really offensive. And you know, there's the, he re really, I think he wants to find an answer to that King Gambit and maybe preserve his Chi a bit more. That really does seem to be his, like outside that Landorus, it's the only option he has into that King Gambit. But the thing with Landorus is you can terrestrialize away from that damage. Yes, it'll still be quite strong because it is just a strong Pokemon, but Chi Yu just having that double up of having the ability to drop its special defense and throw big damage into it with that heat wave it's very very nice unfortunately there is heat wave that you're relying on for that but it is just one of those things you have to go for it you can try and put it to sleep and that then plays that mind game where if like amungus is going for spores king gambit can't really target it or rage powders as well means it is targeting away and sucker punch will fail over and over again does open a room for a sword stance but again if you sword stance that just opens for amungus to then go again and again and go for a spore so it seems there are the tools here on the field to go for it but it just seems that each player has a way to counteract those tools you have Ogapon Heart Flame for that Amoongus to stop it going for those spores. You have Rillaboom to keep the health, you know, quite well nourished on this team. The only real out is just to rely on damage here. And now that Matty has revealed a lot of the ways he can stop this star team brought in by Kengwei, it is going to be really, really hard to adapt to it, especially just after what we saw in that game one. Yes, in that game one, I think, you know, there were both players picked some really strong mixes, but I think maybe Matty was just that one step ahead of his opponent in kind of making the, the right moves. Tornadoes stayed on the field it didn't quite do that much it set up one tailwind and i think the following turn it set up a tailwind again maybe Henway was trying to maybe dodge some sort of sucker punch coming out not too sure what or he could have also sometimes you know maybe run out of time and the, the game just selected a move for him but tornadoes didn't quite do much but maddie having no action or speed control of his team but you know having a lot of priority just making up for that kind of speed control so i really want to see how Henway adjusts to it and you know chi yu is a really critical part of his team we saw his match against uh was it that max and when it just did so much damage so i want to go straight into this game too and i wonder how these players are going to adjust to it let's see how they adjust of course unlike max's team matty has got a lot more balance going through the roster because you know max had that ability to just throw out damage and hope for the best matty has you know pokemon that can do that and also pokemon that want to be sitting around for a while and talk about that there is that iron hands as well as king gambit who has been seen to be quite bulky but chi yu says hello to both of those and can maybe force a trastization quite early on his king gambit which can be a really really bad situation especially if that flutter main comes in and if it times itself perfectly it can get a super effective moon blast in and not have to worry whatsoever about those stat drops because that King Gambit can still go for something like a Sword Stance right now if it feels safe enough. Iron Hands can still fake it out. Kengwei Hen has that mind game though of going for its Trastalization to stop it from happening. Yes, and if the Chiyu does go for that Terror Ghost, it does have to be very, very careful about this King Gambit, which can then hit it for super effective damage. King Yu also, not running a Soul Vest, is going to be taking special hits. It's not going to be taking them as well, but King Gambit going for that Terror Dark turn one, maybe indicating that Maddie is just going to go for an attack straight away this turn. See if that attack goes through, but it, there's no sucker punch so far. We haven't quite seen, and if that is the case, it could have been very good predict. Is that double protect though? I mean, so no fake cards whatsoever will be going off into either of those slots, meaning they are quite safe on that side. But you know, that's just one of the best pace setters there is. But I do think Matty went for a very, very funky Ooh. button in that sword <laughs> stance and taking full advantage of that situation on that turn one. And now you're in a position where you've just got plus two. You're now you're now in your terror dark mode, and even though that it's still a dark type. Not Chi Yu, you're going to be doing lots and lots of damage to it. Tornadoes can bluff by going for a Tailwind, the Sunny Dare will protect, but at some point, like we saw with Taran earlier on today, it will have to go for an attack at some point. You can't keep bluffing it, and Matty must know that situation. If not, you can ignore that Tornadoes because neither of these Pokemon are taking much damage from it, and if you if it goes to that bleak one wind, it risks giving another Defiant boost to the King Amber here, which is very, very annoying. So it could be forced to switch. We'll see whether it's actually the Chi Yu that switches. And depending on who comes in here, it could be a very, very bad situation for Kangwei. 
Oh yes, and this Ogre Pond is going to switch in. So, you know, Tailwind coming off the Tornadoes, maybe trying to dodge any Sucker Punches. But we did see earlier that the King Gambit Sucker Punch is going to fail because one Pokemon switched out and the other went, did not go for attack. But Wild Charge is going to come out and, you know, neutral oh, oh. damage does a lot to this poor Ogre Pond that just switched in. So, you know, maybe Henway realizing that his Flood, uh, not Flood, right, his Chi Yu was quite critical and maybe choosing to just sacrifice at the this Ogre Pond just so that the Flutter main can maybe come in and be able to deal with this King Gambit. That will be a great, great circumstance if it does come in, but of course, you know, if we do see that, if we do see it come in, Flutter main will then be sat down in front of King Gambit, which is plus two, and even with that Terra Fairy, it may be a little scared because, you know, you're only plus two, you have that Terra Dark going for you. In this situation right now, if Matty can get rid of the... of of the Tornadoes with the Iron Hands, that is really, really good. We know it didn't knock out earlier, but that could have been a low roll. It comes up, but it is. Psycho Punch goes on through, does fail. Luckily, you don't activate yourself onto that Spike Shield. Bleak Windstorm comes through, hits both these Pokemon. Will that be that drop? That'll be very, very good for Matty. It goes Ooh. on the Iron Hands, oh, and it goes on the King Gambit as well. He called it! He called it! Oh no. Oh. Now this King Gambit is in a really good position. Wild Charge is not enough to knock out the Tornadoes, which actually earlier went all the way down so it looked like a very high damage roll there and now it's a low damage roll but now this King Gambit is looking absolutely terrifying at plus four and you know with access to Sucker Punch it really doesn't care about these speed drops so uh, I wonder uh, of course the um the Ogre Pond can go for the follow me and save its teammates from one turn but the Tornadoes is just not going to be able to knock out this King Gambit in one hit. So maybe Henway was actually hoping for the Tornado to actually go down this turn so he can get a free switch into a Flutter main coming in. He probably was hoping for that, and if not, maybe hoping for some sort of good roll onto this now dark type King Gambit, because of course with the steel typing it would have taken less. So probably just hoping for something to go through. Sucker so Punch comes out, see who that goes into. It does go into the Ogre Bond, that's definitely getting rid of it. Plus four Terra Dark. <laughs> no, nothing that is taking that right now. And of course, Iron Hands can go for anything at once into this tornado. Bleak Windstorm comes out, oh. and misses the Iron Hands. Will it give King Gambit another oh. boost here? Let's uh, see if it does get hit. It doesn't oh. get that drop, luckily for Hengwei. Wild Charge is enough to get rid of Tornadoes. And it's going to be Chi Yu and Fluttermane facing both these Pokemon. And if you can make your way around the Sucker Punch, which is going to be quite hard given this Fluttermane is a is choice specs, so it's guaranteed to be going for attack. So you can just Sucker Punch into that. And then maybe we could see something like the Rillaboom switch in to have that, you know, that healing later on. It allows you to reset your fake out with the Iron Hands. Of course, the Transformation has already been committed to, but I think it might be going onto that Chi Yu just because even if you tear the Fluttermane right now, it's probably getting knocked out by a Sucker Punch at the stage we're in. Oh yes, we saw in that game one that Fluttermane was about at 30 35% health and it, it had gone for the Terra Fairy so it was resisting the hit from a King Gambit that hadn't had any boost in attack and it still got knocked out and now this King Gambit is a Terra Dark it's got the plus four attack boost and I think this Flutter main probably is not going to be able to survive we just <laughs> see on that screen that terrifying King Gambit there and you know King Gambit if any of Henway's Pokemon can land it attack is probably going to go down but I think that's a pretty good trade and we do see the terrestrialization coming off from this flutter main so maybe Henway believing in the training of his flutter main thinking it can survive this plus four sucker punch that's coming its way I have to see if it is enough. The Sucker Punch Ooh, is coming okay. out. It's plus four. It's just oh, no defense no. whatsoever. It's not very effective oh. and gets that knockout. <laughs> Fluttermane just drops. You know, you never see a fairy type drop to a dark type move like that. And especially Sucker Punch, which is normally always like those like later, like mid to low HP moves. Heat wave, heat, heat wave comes on out, gets a knockout on one, but not the other. I do believe Matty went for that Wild Charge rather than that Drain Punch, just covering maybe with that Terrestrialization on that slot. There's no burn either, which means it is quite good, Matty, just to throw this damage down, see how much it does. This Pokemon isn't only going to be with that tiny sliver of HP. But it does seem that everything is in Matty's hands. All he has to do now is bring in that Rillaboom, and it is just a fake out to seal the deal. And what a way to seal it as well. You know, you always see fake out as that start of the game move, but it must it comes full circle for Matty. It's gonna be the closing move, it's gonna be that fake out should Hengway not forfeit. But you know, it could be a gentleman, could go ahead and say <laughs> not, get the start attack. If not, this is pretty much congratulations to Matty Morgan for becoming the MSS Saturday champion here in Orpington this weekend. 
and it really must be a good high to ride on because you know after coming off of top eight at Worlds, you know you're oh, coming yeah. into coming to winning an MSS, you know flying all the way out here and doing very well, and there is that battle cancelled. Matty is your victor for this finals and is going to take home. 50 CP and possibly a cash prize as well. I don't quite remember Ooh. if we have that going for us, but that'll be very, very nice to see. And you know, just adapting perfectly. And like, yeah, you know, I think there's a little bit of lady luck on that side with the with the boosts. But that turn yes. one yeah. prediction just with the sword stance was amazing. Oh yeah, that was really well played from both players. And you know, that, I think even because we saw in that game one that uh, Flutterman at Terra Ferry still taking so much damage. So maybe that that plus four might not have been needed, but. We'll We'll never know but you know this is kind of the, the kind of game we play that sometimes there's a little bit of unfavorable rng in the game but in the end both players just played really really well this was quite a stacked tournament of really like top tier players and i've here i think earlier when i was joking around matty was saying he's gonna spend his winnings on peanut butter if he wins <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if that's what he, he, does, he does like his peanut butter <laughs> and uh of course, you know, maybe we can hear a little bit more from him. We might try and grab Matty for a quick interview before we end the stream. So we'll be right back in a few seconds to see if we can grab him. If not, we'll have a quick update to see what direction he Welcome back Pokemon Trainers! We are here with the winner of our Orpington Saturday MSS, Maddie Morgan. So huge congratulations Thank to you. you! How are you feeling with this Regulation E team? I feel good. I felt really bad this morning and last night, so I'm really happy <laughs> I won. Yeah, um, I wasn't sure if my team was very good because it has five physical attackers. And I really like a balance, but it worked, so... Yeah, I'm guessing that's why you added the King Gamble on your team. Yeah, pretty much. Because you were scared of the Intimidates. Mm -hmm. Have you brought King Gambit to a lot of your matches I have, today? yeah. And I've, br I've basically brought King Gambit or Fluttermane to every game, because you need something against the Intimidate. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's, there's one question I'm very curious about. You, so you've got a Terra Dark Black Glasses King Gambit. Yes. Does that get the KO on a Landorus with a Sucker Punch? Uh, it depends on their spread, I think, but... Usually, yeah. <laughs> it was so it's cool. so strong. Yeah, that, that moment on stream where we watched the speed drop from the King Gambit. <laughs> that was so ugly. Well. So did you, in the in your calcs or when you were training your King Gambit, even at plus two, would it have knocked out a flutter main with the Sucker Punch? Unless you're very bulky, yeah, it should. Oh, it okay. should. If so, you tear it, I'm assuming, yeah. Yeah, so it actually didn't really matter with the... 
the Unless the, the opponent had a really, really bulky oh, photo. Oh, okay. Me, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah it looked pretty cool. And you had yeah. a Nickelberry Rillaboom, yeah. which is a really cool. I didn't actually, couldn't even remember what that item did until I looked it up, and that increases the, the grass. The grass yeah. yeah, it's it's so good for grassy glow. Oh, right. Did you, because you also had the iron hands, is it because the assault vest was taken by the iron um, hands that you... I'm actually used to non-AV. Uh, oh, okay. Because I used, I used the same Rillaboom at Worlds, except there was no grassy glow. Oh, right. And Protect is so good against Trick Room. Yeah. I actually prefer... Not having a soft face. <laughs> and it's so good on Iron Hands that it's hard to move it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So are you going to be celebrating? I hear from one of your friends who said you'll be, you be you like peanut butter. And I do you like spend all your winnings on peanut butter. I <laughs> might. <an idea. laughs> I could do that. I bought some last night, I think. Oh, okay. So, so peanut butter has just taken <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It's been really cool. Like, every time I see you on stream, you're winning. So, you know, I hope to see more of you. And are you com- playing, so. on, playing tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be here tomorrow. Oh, yeah, because you've I've came all the way here. So. <laughs> all the way from yeah. Ireland. So, you know, it's a very worthwhile trip. I, I oh, yeah. Say, yeah. I've had a good time. Yeah. Well, all the best of luck going <laughs> into tomorrow's MSS. And I'm sure we'll see more of you coming up to any future regionals. Thanks Lille again. And yeah, I should be. I will be at Leo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, so best of luck. It'll be good. And Leo, yeah. hope to see you there. Thank you so and, much. Yeah, amazing team. And very well deserved a win so thank you thank you everyone for tuning in that is it for today but we'll be back tomorrow on sunday with the mss and the stream and maddie i'm sure we'll be doing very very well tomorrow as well we'll see <laughs>